A senior U.S. official says the United States is extending more than $47 million in humanitarian assistance for the emergency response in Sudan and neighboring countries, including Chad and South Sudan. Ruby Taba reports from the Kenyan capital, Nairobi. Speaking during an online news briefing late Tuesday, the U.S. Assistant Secretary for Population, Refugees and Migration, Julieta Force Noise, said she recently traveled to Ethiopia and Chad and met with senior government and humanitarian officials, including Chadian Prime Minister Suses Masra. To that end, I was proud to announce in my meeting with Chad's Prime Minister Masra more than 47 million in humanitarian assistance for the emergency response in Sudan and neighboring countries, including Chad and South Sudan. That amount of money brings the total U.S. humanitarian assistance for people in Sudan and neighboring countries to more than $968 million since last fiscal year. Noise also met with Ethiopian government officials. Since early 2023, Ethiopia has welcomed nearly 50,000 refugees from Sudan. At a time of great instability in the Horn of Africa, Ethiopia's support for displaced populations remains absolutely critical. In both countries, Noiz said she held meetings to discuss refugee resettlement and humanitarian assistance across the continent, including the protection of humanitarian workers. Noiz said the United States will continue to work with international and local partners to provide life-saving support to the millions of people affected by the devastating conflict in Sudan. We are committed to working with other members of the international community to help alleviate the suffering of over one million refugees forced to flee their homes due to violence both Ethiopia and Chad are regional leaders playing essential roles in the Sudan response and broader humanitarian efforts. The United States is the leading humanitarian donor to the global emergency response to the Sudan crisis. Senior U.S. officials have urged the warring parties to allow unhindered humanitarian access, engage in direct talks, agree to a ceasefire, and end hostilities immediately. According to the Associated Press, the aid package is expected to help alleviate the suffering of nearly 25 million people, including refugees who have fled Sudan into Chad and South Sudan. The conflict between the Sudanese army and the rival paramilitary rapid support forces has left 18 million people, more than a third of the population, facing acute food insecurity. Ruben Chama, VOA News. Sierra Leone says it conducted a joint operation with Guinea security that led to the arrest of Abu Bakr Box Conte at the Guinea airport while attempting to flee to Senegal. Information Minister Chana Ba says Conte, a Sierra Leonean, was arrested on March 23rd on suspicion of providing material support in the planning, execution, and escape of the perpetrators of the failed coup on November 26, 2023. Information Minister Barr tells me that former uh, the Conte is also suspected to have to be involved in the trade of drug known as Kush in Sierra Leone. The Sierra Leone government were involved in a joint operation with the Guinean authorities that led to the successful arrest of Abu Bakar Box Conte at the airport. He was arrested by Guinean authorities for his alleged role in the November 26 failed coup. We are very clear on what the process is and our promise that we will follow the law and follow the evidence wherever it leads. And the evidence suggests that this gentleman is allegedly involved in the planning, execution, and in the activities following, including aiding and supporting the escaping or hiding of those who are directly involved. Again, I made very clear that we will follow the law, so that means he's just an accused or he's a suspect at this stage. He will be interrogated by the Sierra Leone police and we will follow the due process of the law. We will not be involved in any 
unlawful activities that are being alleged. So, under what uh, legal method was he arrested? Do you have extradition treaty with Guinea? Absolutely. We have a, a very close security collaboration and arrangement with our Guinean counterparts, for which we continue to thank them. And this is a it's been a common understanding between our two countries. We share intelligence. We do extradite when we have sufficient evidence that we present to each other, and that's the process that we're following. Guinean authorities arrested this gentleman based on the evidence that had been presented to them, and are in the process of bringing him here so that he can help our Sierra Leone police with investigations. It's a, it's a very actually it's a very straightforward case of cross border collaboration. Kenya's government on Tuesday began handing over to relatives the bodies of 429 members of a doomsday cult at the center of legal case that has shocked the country. Exhumed bodies from a vast rural area in coastal Kenya have shown signs of starvation and strangulation. Cult leader Paul McKenzie is accused of asking his followers to starve themselves to death to meet Jesus and now faces charges that include murder. Authorities are using DNA testing to help identify bodies and their families. On Tuesday, the first bodies were handed over to relatives. Emotions ran high at the Malindi mortuary as families collected loved ones for reburial. Some overwhelmed. Francis Siwanje, a father who lost his daughter and seven other family members, pointed at a funeral car carrying four bodies. Wanje said, We lost eight members of our family. We were supposed to get five, but we were told that one of the children did not match the DNA. So now we have been given only four bodies. So we are still hoping that perhaps in the future we are going to get the other four. Mackenzie and dozens of his associates were charged in February with torture and murder of 191 children. The trial begins on April 23rd. Interior Minister Kithu Rekindiki has declared Mackenzie's Good News International Ministries a criminal organized group. Mackenzie is serving a separate one year prison sentence after being found guilty of operating a film studio and producing films without a valid license. Some outrageous Kenyans have asked how authorities didn't notice any sign of the mass death much earlier. The Kenya Human Rights Commission last week said police failed to act on reports that could have prevented prevented the death in the remote Shakahora area. Several reports have been fired at police stations by people whose relatives had entered the forested areas. Thank you so much for watching and peace.